C++ is absolutely atrocious. What? How dare you? I was scrolling through YouTube and this video popped up. Two full hours of my favorite programming language getting ripped to shreds. Look, I've built a game and even a game engine with C++. So I feel qualified to respond to it. So is C++ actually the worst programming language of all time? But the problem that I really want to highlight with the standard library is that it's missing some very fundamental things that are ubiquitous in the modern digital age. Pause for a second. C++ standard library. Namely a networking library, HTTP requests, JSON support, modern IO, modern Unicode support, and command line argument parsing. It's called a standard library for a reason. It handles only the basic building blocks for your projects. No heavy lifting. That's not a mistake. That's the whole damn point. Not to be outdated, but to stay portable. If the language shipped with a massive built-in library, half the places C++ is used today, microcontrollers, automotive ECUs, avionics, medical devices, simply could not run it. In C++, a real hello world executable ships with 8 to 15 kilobytes of memory because C++ compiles straight into binary, running instantly on your computer. The standard library isn't there to spoon feed you everything like a spoiled rich kid. It's there to give you a solid ground so you can stand on your own two feet. But, 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 as minimalistic as the standard library is, I totally agree that we need a packet manager in C++. The human race is almost in 2026 and you're telling me there is still no conversation about a standard packet manager in C++. It's absolutely disappointing. Now, if you've ever actually written C++, you know how infuriating it is to import an external library. Every single time you import an external library, something breaks. Linker areas, include path hell, compiler can't find some certain DLL. It's, it's such a circus. I know someone will say C++ has VC package or Conan. But come on, that's like my mom telling me we have McDonald's at home. Now in Python, scratch that, I despise Python. Let's use TypeScript. You literally type npm install library name and boom, it's there. Downloaded, linked, ready, zero build errors, zero crying. Having something even half as smooth in C++ would save countless hours of dependency management. C++ compile times are completely unacceptable. When I first started making my game engine, I had a very average laptop. That's the reason I started making a game engine. My laptop was not strong enough to run Unreal and I didn't want to use Unity because I wanted to be a cool kid and write C++. With small projects, build times are not noticeable. But once it's a couple files deep, yeah, get ready to pack it up. C++ has tried to fix this with pre-compiled header files. Pre-compiled header files are when you take huge files that are used a lot throughout the entire code base and put them in one header file. The compiler compiles them into one big binary blob. And every other file just reuses that blob instead of reposting the same garbage 500 times. They actually do work, but you're still gonna have moments where you're waiting for 20 minutes staring at the screen while it's just there building your code. The main root of all this evil is header files. Header files are just awful. Pretty much every time you create a C++ file, you also need to create a corresponding header file. And you need to make sure that they're synchronized at all times. That right there is the most infuriating thing ever invented in programming. Every time I have to make a CPP file and then mirror it with a header file, it feels like I'm filling some useless lab report from school. The worst part? You're responsible for keeping both files perfectly in sync. One tiny change and suddenly something is not working and you're stuck debugging something that isn't even actually a bug. You think this is bad? Nah, trust me, it gets much worse. When C++ compiles your project, it has to reread and reprocess every single header your CPP file depends on. And every header, those headers depend on and so on like a chain reaction. Imagine this, I have a vector3 header file and I add one tiny function, like a dot method, to check if two vectors are perpendicular. Looks harmless, right? 
Nope. nope. Now, every file that includes the vector 3 is suddenly marked as dirty and has to be recompiled. And if that vector 3 header is inside your pre-compiled header file, <laughs> congratulations. Now your entire project is marked as dirty and the compiler basically says, yeah, we're rebuilding everything from scratch. All of that from just one tiny change. Header files are holding C++ back. Please, please remove them. The problem is that you have all these keywords like extern, const, inline, static, and const expert, and they all mean different things in different contexts. This is generally one of the most annoying things in the world. The static keyword, for example, has about three or four use cases depending on how you count it. The first one is to make variables persistent between function calls. The second is to share class variables across different instances, or create class functions that exist independently of any instance. But the third use case is a complete semantic non sequitur. It's used to make functions private, or rather, inaccessible from outside the CPP file that they're defined in. You see right here, that makes me want to crash out. But let me show you the one that personally pisses me off. The keyword const. Look at this function, get world transform. Now tell me, what does const mean here? Const at the start, the return value is read only. Const after the star, the pointer itself is locked. Const inside the parentheses, the argument is read only. Const on the pointer argument, the pointer won't change. Const at the very end, the function swears it won't touch your class members. Like, come on, man! It's too much! Const this, const that, yeah, it gives us a lot of control, but it's also holding the language hostage. C markets itself as having zero cost abstractions. Though in practice, some cracks have begun to show in that promise. Unique pointers, for example, are slower than raw pointers because they get passed on the stack instead of in a register. That is not entirely correct. It needs context. C++ aims for zero-cost abstraction, but zero-cost does not mean nothing ever has overhead. It means if an abstraction can be optimized in any way, the compiler will remove the overhead. In C++, there are two common build modes debug and release. Debug mode turns off most optimizations, keeps extra safety checks, and preserves every abstraction. This makes it way easier to cache bugs and trace memory issues, but it also makes everything slower, and in large applications, dramatically slower. Release mode is the opposite. Optimizations are fully enabled, inlining, register allocation, dead code elimination, loop unrolling, and so on and so on. This is where zero-cost abstraction truly kicks in. The compiler strips away all the overhead it can, focusing purely on speed and efficiency. There is a catch though. Bugs are harder to catch. <laughs> See what I did there? But this is typically the mode your application actually ships in. So the claim that unique pointer is slower is only in debug mode. In release mode, the compiler treats it just like a raw pointer. This ties into another bigger point. The code for the C++ standard library looks like hieroglyphics. There's a reason for that. The standard library is designed to be very compiler friendly, not user friendly. This lets the compiler inline tiny functions, propagate constants, erase abstraction layers entirely. If the C++ standard library was written in a clean, pretty, object-oriented code way, the compiler will have far less information and C++ instantly loses the performance advantage it's known for. So yeah, unfortunately, the ugliness is deliberate. It exists to guarantee you only pay for what you use, and if the compiler can remove that cost, it will. Well, damn, a two-hour video hating on C++. I can't lie, I have to respect the hate. My man made an entire channel just to spend two hours roasting C++. That is automatically one of the greatest acts of hate in this entire decade. The original plan for this video was to defend C++, but nah, this man's video had too many good points. Depending on how this video does, maybe I'll make a follow up on why C++ is actually the best programming language of all time. But anyways, enough slander to my favorite language. So like if you like, dislike if you dislike, and make sure to subscribe so your life stays upright. Peace.